Hi, my name is Tim Gillingham with Bee Stinger, and I'm here to show you today a little bit about stabilization and teaching you how to stabilize your hunting bow. Now, just for the sake of, of understanding stabilization, I brought my target bow with us, okay? And this is the best way to illustrate what stabilizing a bow does. There is nothing at the moment of truth that is going to help you like a well-stabilized bow. Okay, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create an overall moment arm, a longer moment arm that puts weight out on the end of that moment arm. That's going to control and slow down your mistakes as an archer. Um, in a hunting bow system, we don't want to pack this big long thing around, so we're going to shorten that system up. Now, here's the exact same system that you see on a lot of target bows in a shorter version. Okay, For the sake of portability and the sake of just be having to pack it around into the woods, you know, you're going to change your stabilizer system you know, compared to a target archer. Now, if you're climbing up a tree stand, I really don't think that a bow can be too heavy. You don't have to pack the bow very far. I would highly recommend you put a lot of mass weight on it, as much as you can handle, and, and it's going to help you when that buck comes in and your nerves are jangled. It's going to help you make a better shot, okay? This system here is a Sport Hunter combo with the, the new Micro Hex with countervelt technology. Now, it's, it's rigged up so I have a back bar system and a front bar system. Uh, the sidebar system here allows us to kind of offset the weight of the sight and the quiver that's off the, the right side of the bow because we want that stabilizer to kind of help that bow hold perfectly straight up and down too so we level our bubble naturally, okay? Um, and then where you put the weight on the front and the back is going to be dictated by a couple of things. And we'll go into that when we start showing you that. Another system you might use is this new counterslide system. Now, a counterslide... We have a new dovetail system this year. We had a new system last year. This allows you to kind of slide this bar in and out. In a single bar system, gives you the same leverage as that two bar system. Now we can keep it a little shorter, a little bit more out of the way, um, but it still serves to offset the weight of the sight and the quiver and allow us to put weight front and back to stabilize our shot the very best. Now, Bee Stinger came into existence because they built the very best 12 inch stabilizer for bow hunter freestyle competition. They were the first company to actually put a big disc weight on the end of a 12 inch bar because they were limited to a certain length bar and that maximized the stabilizing effect of that particular stabilizer. So if you're really set on using one stabilizer, I can't say enough about this pro hunter stabilizer, but let's go ahead and show you now how I go about setting a bow up. So this is my wife's bow, and yes, it's going to be a little short on the draw length, but it'll serve the purpose of showing you what I'm talking about. So you're going to take an arrow, we're going to take the stabilizers off the bow. Now she's going to be hunting with this bow with a quiver on the side of the bow. We're hunting elk out west. Uh, this is a very lightweight quiver from Octane. It really doesn't weigh much. I, I, really, I really do like it. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to shoot this bow into the target, and you're going to watch the reaction of the bow because the first thing we want to do with the stabilizers is cancel any erratic uh, reactions. So let's go ahead and shoot it and just see what is the natural reaction. Okay, so this bow's pretty neutral. It wants to tip this way a little bit. So the way we're going to stabilize this bow to start off with is we're going to make it a little pretty much even. Okay, so I have two 10 inch bars here. And these come in a 10-8 or they come in a kit or you can buy the bars and the brackets individually and, and do your own. But because that bow reacted pretty neutral, we have a 10-inch bar here and a 10-inch bar here. We're going to keep the weight fairly equal. And then we're going to use the offset bar to kind of cancel that twisting reaction. So now that we have the bars on there, let's look and see what happens. Now it's a very dead. It's still tipping a little bit this way. Okay, so now we're going to make an Allen, we're going to grab an Allen wrench and we're going to make an adjustment. Okay, we're just going to kick this bar out one notch and now there's metal teeth in these brackets. And that's exclusive to Beastinger, these metal teeth. And you want to make sure you disengage the teeth so you don't strip them. So we're going to click it out. And we probably need to go just a little bit more. We don't want to rip them teeth off. So we're going to go out one notch and then we're just simply going to shoot the bow again. See, now I, have a, I should have a very neutral reaction in a bow. Okay, now that's the ratio that I want. That's the ratio of stabilization weight that I want. Now, 
if I want to add more mass weight to help me aim better, I'm simply going to change it in this ratio. I have three in the back here and four in the front. So I can kind of go one to one and just keep playing with that reaction and playing with my hold until I get the most optimal for my setup. Keep that in mind. Those are the principles of stabilization. You know, it's not rocket science, but I think you'll benefit from some of these higher end stabilizer systems that really will stabilize your bow rather than just hold your wrist strap on.